What is up, guys, man? It is the two-minute drill here, February 24th, 2021, man. Another transfer episode. We have two big transfer commitments that happened in the in the recent days, I would say. One of them is kind of an update. We covered, you know, when he transferred. He has found a school. And then a guy who I think a lot of people have overlooked that is a huge storyline for a very, very major SEC program, found his home – um, I believe it was yesterday or today, but Tyler Shaw, man, let's start with him. He was on our second episode of the two minute drill. We talked about his transfer. We finally found out where he was taking his talents, man. Texas tech land Shaw after he decided he was going to transfer out from Oregon. He brings a whole lot of experience after starting this entire year, limited experience behind Justin Herbert, a winning pedigree, man, Back-to-back Pac-12 champion, technically. He was the starter this year, led that Oregon team that had a lot of opt-outs, a lot of people missing to the promised land in terms of a Pac-12 championship. He brings a wealth of a – I mean, he, he does it all, man. He's got the winning record. He's got a lot of potential, too. This kid – has so much untapped potential, I think. I think he went through some growing pains this year. The offense was really hurt by some opt-outs. You look at Panay Suwell, the type of protection he could have had if Panay Suwell opts in for the Oregon Ducks. This is also a huge, huge need here for the Red Raiders, guys. I mean, you look at Alan Bowman, starter, contributor for three years, has officially transferred out out of Texas Tech. You still got Henry Columbi back, and he has limited experience. Four-star uh, Bre- Brehi Morin. Morton comes in as a true freshman. He has a, you know, we got lack of experience here as a true freshman. Not much proven at this level in Henry. And you look at both of these guys, they also have potential, but I think Tyler Shaw could be the guy moving forward for the Red Raiders based on what he's proven. Just had a Pac-12 championship run. He faced all that adversity in terms of opt-outs and players missing last season and still found a way to take his team and achieve the ultimate goal of winning a Pac-12 championship. On top of that, his coach was in the midst of being tied to every open SEC job in the country. Auburn pretty much was... There was rumors that Auburn had them in the bag if they wouldn't have got in the Pac-12 championship after Washington ultimately had to give up their spot due to COVID issues. But, man, Shaw did have some rough patches. You look at that Cal game this year, which Oregon lost, which they were the better team, but Shaw just didn't play up to the standard. In the biggest moment, the Pac-12 championship, he shined. It was his best game. So I'm looking for more of that from Shaw and you look at you look at his accuracy and consistency issues. He's still ranked fifteenth in the country in passing of passer efficiency. Fifteen total touchdowns, only six turnovers. Those got to go down. Those touchdowns have to go up. But this is only in like five or six games this year. That's not a huge sample size in terms of what Shaw could really do in a full, let's say, thirteen to fifteen game season. They they were missing contributors on the offense, like I said, so that probably also hurt. No offseason. Your first year as a starter, man, Justin Herbert's gone. He's balling in the NFL, and you have to step in. No, Almost no like prep, formal preparation, no spring practices, no summer workouts. All that stuff is limited and or cut completely out. So Tyler Shaw did his best this year, I think. I think he's going to be able to shine in a pass-heavy offense, but he has to make smart decisions with the ball. The skill positions are going to be loaded at Texas Tech. They always are, so it just adds another positive. The thing I'm looking for, Shaw, is can he push the ball down the field like Texas Tech likes to do? We know he's efficient. We know he can run kind of like the, I guess, smaller. He can can make all the smaller, I guess, scale throws at Oregon. They really don't push the ball down the field like Texas Tech. But we saw Bowman throw 60 times a game at some points this year. Is Shaw ready for that type of workload? He never really was relied on that much at Oregon. I mean, you had C.J. Verdell and a lot of of the running game was a huge part of what they did at Oregon. The offensive line is something I'm concerned about. It's a much better Oregon than Texas Tech. How's he going to do where that internal clock in his head might be a little bit accelerated? But overall, 
for Texas Tech, I give this a B plus, maybe an A minus, depending on how it turns out. I think he's one of the more talented quarterbacks out there that they could have gotten. You lose your three year starter in Bowman. Why not replace it with a guy who just won a Pac-12 championship with an Oregon team that, after opt-outs, really wasn't expected to compete, per se, for that Pac-12 championship. Now, moving on here, man, this is probably a little bit of a personal topic, man. I love talking about it. I still think it's a big transfer, so let's get into it. Drayshawn Miller transfers to Auburn after leaving West Virginia. Auburn's been doing major major work post national signing day within the transfer portal we talked about dylan brooks an episode or two ago another huge commitment here miller is originally from kennesaw georgia so he's kind of coming back you know closer to home he was the 34th overall ranked transfer in the portal and the number three db cornerback by 247 sports in this transfer portal huge gift for auburn he missed the 2019 season with an injury to his leg, but he played a super, super vital role for the Mountaineers this season in their quest to get back into uh, to, to Big 12 contention, let's say, after some down years. He was an intricate part in this West Virginia secondary, this West Virginia defense, leading the nation in passing yards allowed per game. This defense was elite at times, man. They were shutting down offenses left and right. I was so impressed with the secondary. There were some games we covered on the podcast that we preview where I had a real tough time picking against West Virginia due to just the secondary. And it's not just Trey Sean Miller. There was a lot of guys that contributed to that. Look at someone like Tony Fields, a linebacker that was a lot of a big pass coverage linebacker in that defense. This season, man, 31 total tackles. He only had one pick, but he had eight pass breakups, which was one of the best in the conferences. And this was only in nine games. I mean, a very small sample size like we see with everyone's stats this year. He he had For coming off an injury where you had to miss the entire season, I feel like this is a this is exactly what you would expect. I think he's going to get even better with an entire offseason this year, hopefully. Spring practice, summer workouts, all that will be huge for Miller here. He's a long, rangy corner, 6'1", 192, but he has elite athleticism. He can be very physical at the line of scrimmage, and he's a playmaker, man. He, he has a very high football IQ. He knows where the ball is going to be, and he puts himself in the right positions, and that's why I'm very, very high on Miller headed into Auburn. And the reason this is very important for Auburn, not just all the talent for Miller, he also there is also a major need in the secondary for the Tigers. Lack of depth really hurt them down the stretch last year, and they had a lot of inexperience at key positions after a huge defensive exodus in the secondary and D line. They address the D. Uh, they don't address the experience with you know D line, but they they. Uh, they help with the talent with Dylan Brooks' addition. They get a huge defensive line transfer out of Northwestern earlier this year. Experience, talent solved there. Now they get Miller, who has experience and talent, and will be able to line up next to Roger McCreary. And McCreary and Miller could be one of the best duos at cornerback in the, ent- in the entire conference. The SEC is going to have to worry about Miller and McCreary. Add that to Jalen Simpson and Nehemiah Pritchett being able to be the three and four corners there. They got a lot of experience last year. You saw Nehemiah Pritchett almost get a pick six at LSU, played a huge role in that defense. Jalen Simpson was supposed to be the go-to corner. He dealt with some injuries, was out a few games. So we're going to see how those two guys develop. Smoke Monday's back in the secondary. It's a lot of question marks um, surrounding Christian Tut. He transferred, came back. We'll see what ends up there. But if they can return Tut – and Smoke Monday, Tut plays that star position. Uh, Smoke Monday's a big time safety. Sure, um, Sherwood's gone, but there's a lot of young, talented players that got a lot of time here for Auburn uh, this season due to injuries, due to opt outs, whatever it may be. Auburn has a lot of guys with experience that need time to develop even more this year. Uh, Miller's going to have two years of eligibility remaining and is probably going to arrive on the planes in May. So he may miss spring workouts, but apparently he's been in contact with Auburn. He knows what he has to do to get ready to come down there. He's already learning the playbooks and 
he's getting ready to make an impact immediately on campus. And so they're expecting him to arrive in May ready for summer workouts and ready to make an impact. Now they did, you know, they, they had a junior college kid last year that came in. He really didn't make an impact due to just, he couldn't really find his place. That could be interesting, but they finally have some depth in the secondary. And I think, when you're facing teams like Alabama's receiving course that we see, they just reloaded with people like JoJo Earl, even after Javante Smith left. They are going to be deadly. George is going to be able to push the ball down the field with JT Daniels and then boys. You have LSU returning Miles Brennan and a wealth of talent at wide receiving at the wide receiving position. You got the air raid down there at Mississippi State and Starkville. So you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of teams you have to face where you got to be ready to defend the pass. Didn't even mention Lane Giffen and Ole Miss. So every single opponent on this Auburn Tiger schedule is going to be able to push the ball down the field, have very talented guys at the wide receiver position. So Miller was one of the most important pickups, I think, of the all season for the Tigers. But guys, that is our two minute drill, man. Actually stayed on track today. Kept it about 11, 12 minutes, which is what we're aiming for. We're getting better and better at these, man. They're coming out five days a week, like I said, guys, on YouTube, Monday through Friday. So make sure to subscribe to the Blue Bloods on YouTube. Turn on your post notification bell up there. It's a little bell, man. Just click it. That way, y'all get notified anytime a two minute drill goes out. That way, y'all can stay up to date on all things college football. We have big things in the making. Make sure while you're at it, Go check out all our ACC in 28 Days interview. We have a bunch this week, five interviews released this week, man. We got Jay Bramlett, Notre Dame punter, joining us. Well, we got Bryce Kuhn, Georgia Tech um, insider, and he literally is the busiest man in the world. So make sure to check out that interview. Jones Angel from uh, UNC is another one. So make sure to go check out all of these interviews you can find of videos on youtube so just go back to our page click on those or you can go find the audio versions anywhere you listen to podcasts but for right now guys and for the two minute drill we are out <laughs>